I'm Dr. Frida, and today we're going to talk about BA2, what you need to know about this stealth Omicron variant. Now, BA2 is a subvariant of the original Omicron variant, and it is here. BA2 is loud, it's proud, and it is even more contagious than the original Omicron strain. And guess what? BA2 has become the dominant variant in the United States. It is the most common variant in the US and globally for that matter. But what does it mean? Does it mean that we should panic? Does it mean that the BA2 will send us right back into the earlier days of the pandemic when everything was locked down and jacked up? What does the BA2 variant mean for you? Keep watching. I'm Dr. Frida. I'm an MD who has been triple board certified, and today we're going to talk about BA2, what you need to know about this stealth Omicron variant. We'll talk about the definition of BA2. We'll talk about how contagious or transmissible it is. We'll talk about how deadly or virulent it is, and if it's more deadly than any of the previous strains. We'll also talk about what it means in our world. How will BA2 affect whether or not we can move smoothly into an endemic phase? And be sure to watch my YouTube video, Endemic versus Pandemic, after you finish watching this video. Then very importantly, we'll answer the question, should you be worried? Should you panic when it comes to BA2? All right, so let's get started. So BA2 is a subvariant, is of the sublineage of the Omicron variant of COVID-19. Now, we've all watched the world be rocked by the pandemic of COVID-19 ever since it was declared in March of 2020. We've seen surges, we've seen valleys, we saw what the Delta variant did, which was a very deadly, very virulent variant, which caused a lot of hospitalizations and death. And then we saw Omicron, which at that point was the most transmissible variant that we had seen of COVID-19. It caused so many peaks in hospitalizations. And then as of January 2022, here in the United States, we hit a peak with the cases and the hospitalizations and the deaths. But toward the end of January, moving into February, we started to see cases decline very significantly from the original Omicron variant. But then we have BA2. BA2 is like Omicron's little sister. It is a variant of Omicron. Omicron, the original is BA1, and now we have BA2. And when you look at the numbers, the genomic sequencing at the beginning of February, we see that BA2 at that point did not make up very much of the COVID-19 cases, only around 1%. But Fast forward to the last week of March 2022, at that point, BA2 became the dominant variant in the United States with well over 50% of the genomic sequencing being BA2. What does that mean? Even before it became the dominant variant in the US, it had already become the dominant variant in Europe, the UK, really globally, okay? So now the BA2 variant is here, very transmissible. What does it mean? Well, one important question, is BA2 more deadly? Is it more virulent? And it does not seem to be any more deadly than the original Omicron strain, meaning it doesn't seem to make more people need ventilators or hospitalizations at this point. So that's good news because you remember the Delta variant was very deadly. So it looks like the Omicron variant BA2 is not any more deadly or virulent than BA1. That's a great thing. But what does it mean as far as us moving from the pandemic phase of COVID-19 to that endemic phase where everything is static, predictable, and we have low levels? Well, it could disrupt that because a key to a virus or an infection being endemic is you need it to be predictable. You need to be able to predict when it will surge, what time of year, what community it will affect. You need to be able to have some predictability and some very low level infections. And as long as we have these variants which keep popping up, then at this point, at this point, it's not necessarily predictable, especially when you take a look at some other countries and other parts of the world, such as Hong Kong, where the BA2 has hit it in a very, very heavy way. 
and other places where hospitalizations and cases have started to go up. So that predictability factor is not there. We're not static. And so it's very possible that the BA2 variant will possibly slow down as moving into the endemic phase. That remains to be seen. So then very importantly, should you be worried? Should you be worried? Should you panic? Let's talk about that. So we know that in Europe, and let's look specifically at the UK, the BA2 variant became dominant. And two weeks after the UK lifted a lot of its mitigation strategies, after it lifted its mask mandates, we saw the BA2 start to surge, hospitalizations and cases went up in the UK. Why is this significant for us? Well, because what happens in the UK typically occurs about three weeks later in the United States, when it comes to the COVID-19 virus. That's what our pattern has been thus far. But there are a few things that make things a little potentially less worrisome. And I'll tell you what, one, while the UK was lifting its mask mandates and kind of going back to life as normal, we didn't do that here in the United States. We actually held on to many of our rules as far as mask mandates indoors for a longer period of time. And so we may not necessarily follow that same pattern, but we should still watch and see if we're really going to surge, if our cases are going to jump up. Now, when you look at some of the news from China, specifically from Hong Kong, I can understand how that can induce panic, you know, with certain people, because in Hong Kong, it has been reported that there's been a huge surge since the BA2 variant, and there has been a massive lockdown. In fact, reportedly, over 90% of the deaths linked to COVID-19 have occurred within 30 days, within the month of March, 2022. More than 90% of the deaths have occurred since this BA2 variant has been on the rise. That can make you question, hmm, should we worry? But let's talk about some very basic differences between Hong Kong and the United States. One, the vaccines. They use different vaccines than we do. Most of the people vaccinated in Hong Kong are vaccinated with Sinopharm or Sinovac, some of the Chinese derived vaccinations. And just based on studies, those vaccines do not have the same efficacy as the ones that we use in the, in the United States. Their vaccines are not quite as effective, meaning they won't have the same community immunity that we have in the U.S. That being said, when you have these variants that come, then you're more likely to have a surge in places where people don't have adequate immunity. That's just the science of it. Also, they are very effective as far as having their no COVID tolerance policy, and they are very strict, very severe on locking people down, much more strict than we ever were in the United States. But here's the issue. You can only keep people locked down for so long, right? During the lockdown, yes, you're definitely going to slow down the transmission and potentially hospitalizations and deaths. But at some point, you have to let people out, okay? The lockdown has to end. And when that lockdown ends, even if it's after the current variant or the BA2 variant has gone away, surely another variant is likely to come. So what happens with the next COVID-19 variant? You still have a community of people who don't have very effective vaccinations. They don't have that community immunity and the same thing could happen again. They can have these huge surges and they can have these high deaths. So again, not to say that we should not be paying attention, but there are some differences in Hong Kong and the United States. So still, I say for us not to panic, but to keep our eyes on what's going on globally and scientifically. Now let's talk about this community immunity and vaccination. So as of the beginning of April, 2022, 65% of people in the United States had received at least uh, two vaccines, right? And we look at just the adults, over 75% of adults in the United States had received at least two vaccines. So that's actually a, a pretty high number of adults who have been vaccinated. So that's that community immunity I'm talking about, where you have people with antibodies and some form of protection against COVID-19. If you take it a step further, the CDC actually did a survey of people who donated blood. And what was found that of people ages 16 and over, 95% had some antibodies against COVID-19. So with this 95%, we're talking about some people who have been vaccinated, and we're also talking about some people who have received immunity or have had antibodies based on being infected with COVID-19. 
at any rate, in that pool, you had 95% of people over the age of 16 with some form of antibodies against COVID-19, further supporting the fact that in the United States, we have a pretty decent amount of immunity, right? Does that mean we can't have variants that will evade the immunity? No, that's not what that means. We, can, we still can have some variants that can evade the immunity, but does it offer some protection, perhaps making it less likely for masses to get extremely ill, extremely, you know, to the point where they have to be ventilated, hospitalized, possible. We do have some significant community immunity in the United States. So again, I say for us not to panic, but keep watching. Remember, it's never a great idea to panic or get extremely stressed out because it's, it's difficult to focus and to take care of business. In fact, stress can actually negatively affect your physical health. Make sure you check out my YouTube video on how stress can negatively affect your health after you finish watching this video. So now what to do? What's the take home message when it comes to BA2? The take home message is that even though it is more transmissible than even the original Omicron variant, it does not appear to be more deadly or more virulent. But let's just say BA2 or maybe even a future variant is, you know, pretty virulent. The good news is now we have the tools, certainly many more tools than we had when this pandemic began. We have vaccinations. Yes, we have vaccinations and the studies are in. They show us that when you have two doses of a COVID-19 vaccine, then you have a more than 70% protection against being hospitalized or dying or being severely ill. And if you have a booster, you have a greater than 90% protection against being severely ill, hospitalized, or from dying. So the vaccinations do work. And right now it appears that the vaccines still give us protection against the BA2, just as with the original Omicron strand. You know, is it possible to still test positive or get infected? Absolutely. But are you likely to die or be hospitalized if you're vaccinated and certainly boosted? You're much, much less likely. We have that protection. We now know about the masks that protect us. We also have treatments. Yes, like Paxlovid, we have treatments for if you get the COVID-19 infection, which are very effective in preventing hospitalization or death, especially if the infection is caught within the first three or five days. We now have tools. And so when it comes to BA2, I definitely want you to stay aware. I want you to pay attention. I don't want you to go to sleep when it comes to COVID-19, but I actually don't want you to panic. If you found this video to be helpful and informative, please be sure to like it and to share it with the people you care about. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure you hit the notification bell. That way you'll be amongst the first to know when I release new medical content. Also, don't be shy. Follow me on Instagram at dr.frida. That way you'll see what I'm up to in my everyday healthy, happy life that, that I try to lead. And that's where I also let you know when I'm doing various media appearances, when I'm on national news shows, community service, and just various tidbits on how to stay healthy. I thank you for watching. I appreciate you for watching and be sure to live your healthiest, happiest life. I'm Dr. Frida.